What's up gang and welcome to another episode where we are back down in Dorset at Charper Estate and above me, three stories up on top of that archway is a life-size stag. Me and Lucas over the last couple of weeks have been making the rubber moulds. Uh, last week was real bad weather, it was like 50 mile an hour winds and being up there in a little wind tunnel, 50 mile an hour winds is not my idea of fun. So we're back down here this week where we are fiberglassing the whole jacket so we've sectioned off the moulds in different manageable castable sections and now what we're doing is we're using this trusty rope and hoists. I thought we were going to get electric hoists but they put in like a, a jockey wheel type thing. So this is a really heavy barrel of resin. Oosk! In fact I think that might be a little bit too heavy. Me and Lucas, Lucas is already up there, I'm going to go up there, I'm going to help him pull this up and I hope that the knots hold because <laughs> otherwise we got ourselves a mess. Anyway, I'm gonna rock on upstairs. Yep, that's fine. And then try and attempt to lift that up there. I'm a little bit nervous about this purely for the fact that it is super heavy. More, it's much more heavier than the other one, but we, me and Lucas are strong, baby. Ready, Lucas? Okay. Mother. Trucker! Keep it tight, Lucas. We got this, man! Right, you got it, hold it. Safety first. Oh, you can't fucking win. Woo! Now that's my exercise for the week. Woo! In this heat, lifting that weight. I got my sweat on. In this glorious sunshine, the best day to do resin work, it's gonna go off a lot faster than it normally does. So we're actually gonna put in less catalyst. But today, uh, sorry, yesterday, Lucas made these divides, much like we did with rubber, but these are to indicate where the jackets are going to be separated. He added these little rubber um, locator points so that when the jacket goes on, they mould around these lugs, and then once the mould's ready to be taken away, the jacket's then gonna have a hole in it, so when the rubber goes back in, it's completely located exactly where it should be, so when you brush in your wax, it's gonna give you a true representation of what's underneath. So right now, we're gonna get ourselves set up, we're gonna put a board down, we're then gonna get resin ready, we're gonna brush on our fiberglass, and we're gonna get this uh, calcium carbonate resin mix, which we'll brush on first. And what that does, it basically captures all of these lumps and bumps, and then it gives us a nice bed to put the fiberglass onto. So we're gonna brush on with some calcium carbonate, and then we're gonna go on with some fiberglass. Gang, before we actually start applying any resin, um, I would like to try and make it as easy as possible to remove the jacket once it's gone off. So what I tend to do is I just get a bit of wax, and I brush a load of wax over all of the rubber, and that just creates like a, a, a release agent, basically, instead of the resin just really sticking to it. Rubber's its own release agent, but if we can make it a little bit easier for ourselves to then brush a wax on and allow us to just remove the resin a lot easier, then we shall do that. So I'm just gonna give it a light coat over all the rubber before we start the resin. rubber this here is a pre-mix Lucas very kindly pre-mixed all of this resin this is a mixture of GRP resin and a calcium carbonate and a calcium carbonate is like a mineral powder and it just thickens up that resin and it gives you a lovely base to put your fiberglass on top 
Because if you just wetted all your fiberglass and then put it straight onto the rubber, it's not actually that malleable and it doesn't bend round corners. And if, for those of you that do fiberglassing, try and bend fiberglass round the corner, it ends up bubbling at the actual corner itself. So what we try to do is we just put a load of the um, mix down and it gives us a lovely bed and it's nice and soft for the fiberglass to adhere to. And like I said, it basically molds to the rubber and it gives you an exact replica of how the rubber is. I'm working on at the moment is I'm just creating that lovely bed and as you can see it's just covering the rubber just enough you can't really see it underneath and it's a nice thick layer and then once Lucas is finished up brushing in the resin on the fiberglass I'm then gonna just grab a load of fiberglass and then I'm gonna just stipple it on top of this area creating a lovely mother mold so that the rubber can hold in place when you're casting it. Yeah. Grind it, get a lot of dough and dirt the water obstacles, cause anything is possible. Yeah. Oh man, I got a lot of gold. Stack that bread and buy my nose. Anything is possible. Yeah. yeah. Grind it, get a lot of dough and dirt the water obstacles, cause anything is possible. Laying down the fiberglass, basically, you create all this air. You're pushing air down onto the actual mold, so you create air bubbles underneath the resin. And so what you need to try and do, I would normally bring a paddle roller, but silly old me, I forgot it. So I'm having to be extra careful and stipple twice as much because there are air bubbles in here. And what you're trying to do is push the air bubble or all the air to the surface, and that creates a really lovely tight fit. Otherwise you end up with a lot of lumps and bumps and loads of air in between, and it just creates quite a weak jacket. So I am trying to now just making sure that all these air bubbles have been removed. So with the line man, it's just a safe to henny. Used to be a penny pincher, now I'm in plenty business. Grind hard, nigga, oh god. Grind hard, nigga, oh god. Yeah. We grind to get a lot of dough and dirt through all the obstacles, cause anything is possible. All right. hey. Oh man, I got a lot of gold. Stack that bread and buy my nose. Anything is possible. All right. Hey. I grind to get a lot of dough and dirt through all the obstacles Cause anything is possible yeah. Yeah. Oh man, I got a lot of gold Stack that bread and buy my nose Anything is possible I lean with it, I rock So gang, the beautiful thing about resin work is that it's actually quite a quick process if you've got the technique down So what I try and do is I always use one hand that's meant to be my dirtiest hand and then one hand that's meant to be my cleanest hand but in this case they're both dirty But the theory is, you grab your resin fiberglass with one hand and then you use your brush as the tool. What I tend to do is I just sort of eye it up and I push the brush down on top and I start from one end and I stipple it down until it's stuck. Then what I do is I work my way to the middle until finally it gets to the other end. And then once you're stippling it down, it tends to want to just stick to the actual resin that you've got down there already. And because we're on a vertical, I've had to sort of lean and get in all different funny angles. But now it's all on, it's stuck to itself. And now we're just going to stipple it on and pushing all the air to one side. And that's how you end up putting one laminated panel of resin fiberglass on without getting yourself in a bit of a tizwaz. So gang, as you can see down here, after we've put our fiberglass on, it's start to go off a little bit. If you have any resin left in the buckets, the liquid resin, we sort of brush it on top. One, it makes it a bit thicker. Two, it makes it super duper strong. And three, fiberglass gives you all these splintery bits. They don't, they don't see much now, but once they go off, they're like little needles. And so what I tend to do is I put a flow coat of resin over the top and it makes it super smooth. Before you do that, just give it a quick sand down 
Luckily down there, obviously gravity's in our favour, so they all sort of sink to the bottom. But on here, we're going to maybe just give it a little quick sand down, brush it with some resin, and it just gives it a really smooth surface to touch. Because when you're manhandling all of these panels, when you're casting, you, the last thing you want is splinters in your hands and your fingers. And to be honest with you, you feel them going in, but then you can't get them out for a while to come. So always when you're doing resin work, sand all these edges down, flow coat with resin, and it makes it a lot super ne nicer. Super nicer, it makes it all nice and neat and safe for your hands. So gang, that about wraps it up. So thanks for coming along on today's episode where me and Lucas finally got most of the jacket done on this life size stack. I cannot wait to show you this thing in the world. It's going to be absolutely epic. So if you want to see more, swipe up, like and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next week. Woo!